It's a big, big year in Ireland this year. Uh, we're celebrating, uh, we're marking 100 years since the Easter Rising of 1916. And an amazing revolution because the men and women who began it knew it was doomed to failure. But they hoped, they put their lives on the line so that one day in the future, Irish people could fuck up their own country by themselves. <laughs> but I find the whole idea of anniversaries quite strange because they're not real, are they? They're an act of collective imagination. Like we all decide, because somebody else tells us to, to think about the same shit at the same time. Like, how can you put something as rigid as time on something as fluid as memory? And I have to be honest with you, I fucking struggle with this part of the show myself. But... <laughs> <laughs> there will be. There's lots of things you can celebrate, you know. If we celebrate 1916, we won't have to celebrate the Great War of Independence, where freedom was actually achieved. And then we're going to have to celebrate the Civil War, where the English were gone, but we still had the guns. <laughs> so we said, well, we fucking shoot one another for a while, we win. And then things went quiet up until about 1990 and we qualified for the World Cup. So these are all <laughs> the markers ahead of us. You know, I, things are like always changing and, and democracy, I suppose, gives people an opportunity to, to have a say in the way their country is, is run. You know, like uh, England or the UK or whatever the fuck you're most comfortable calling yourselves. Um, most recently voted to leave Europe. Where will they go? <laughs> they can't stay here, lads. <laughs> you have to fuck off. <laughs> Pull anchor and fucking sail away. Now, we give you a good send off when you're passing by Ireland. Good luck now. <laughs> don't rush back, you'll be grand. Go on, off you go. We'll fill in the gap, don't you worry. <laughs> And there's going to be changes, you know. Unfortunately, it meant the end uh, of David Cameron, and I liked him. I loved David Cameron, because allegedly, when he was young, he put his willy <laughs> in a dead pig's mouth. That's exactly the type of man I can follow. Someone who's prepared to go that extra inch. He's precisely the person you needed sitting across the table from Angela Merkel during tough EU negotiations. <laughs> I've done it before, Angela. <laughs> oh, I'll fucking do it again, I will, I will. I hired people. It's very confusing for us to watch American actors on, on television going, oh my God, I'm so drunk. We're screaming at the screen, no, you're not drunk. If you were drunk, you wouldn't be able to remember your lines. <laughs> Getting drunk and having sex with strangers, that's how Irish people meet one another, isn't it? <laughs> drunk and sex with somebody you don't know. <laughs> you should try it, it's fantastic. You do things you never thought you'd do. You put your face places. <laughs> Normally, you wouldn't put your feet. <laughs> That's all right, I don't mind the smell. <laughs> Very nice to be here in this uh, wonderfully optimistic country. Uh, to an Irish person, though, it seems that your optimism is borning, uh, uh, bordering on a kind of psychomania. Everybody in this country wants to be fucking happy. <laughs> really want to be happy. I'm gonna try my best to be happy. I don't care if it drives me fucking insane. <laughs> the whole country over is covered with these teethed freaks. Everywhere you go, have a nice day, have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice day. That sounds like a threat to an Irish person. 
I'll have whatever kind of a fucking day I want. <laughs> you mind your own business. <laughs> Irish people, I think, I think we're a lot more realistic about the randomness of life, the, the, the untold cruelty for no reason. Irish people don't say, have a nice day. We say, good luck. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if, if we're depressed in Ireland, I, but I do know that we like the shade, don't we? We don't mind things being a little bit dark, you know. I went to this religious service in in, in Houston, in Texas, given by a guy called Joel Osteen. Twenty-two thousand people turned up at it, and they were all kind of happy and clapping their hands and wee hee, wee hee. And then Joel comes out, dressed not like a preacher, but like an accountant or an insurance person. Everything is neat and tidy and everything is in place and he's there. Have a nice day. Jesus wants you to be happy. That's right. Y'all got to be happy now for Jesus. It says so here in the book. Y'all got to be happy for Jesus. Woohoo! In America, he's a superstar. In Ireland, we think he was retarded. <laughs> Yeah, have a nice day. That's right, Joel, you have a nice day. <laughs> just, just get on the bus, will you? Get on the bus. <laughs> your helmet has your name on it. That's the lad. <laughs> Perhaps, I don't know, perhaps we're a little bit dark, perhaps we're a little bit depressed, I don't know, that's why we go so mad, you know, maybe, I was in a, I was in a taxi in Los Angeles, you know, and the taxi driver was saying, you know, you know this time next year I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> I've written a situation comedy. I know there's going to be a bidding war between ABC and CBC and NBC and <laughs> ABC. It's fantastic, man. I got the script right here. I'm going to be a millionaire. Woohoo! That's right. This is a milk car. I love milk car. Now, maybe somebody else in the back of the taxi would have tried to encourage him. Would have gone, fair play to you. I'm going to be a millionaire as well. The two of us will be millionaires. I'll come visit you on your boat. You can come for a trip on my plane. We're both going to be millionaires. <laughs> but I was in the back of the taxi. And I wanted, to, I wanted to get disinfected from this toxic optimism. So I said to him, what if it's shit? He told me to get out, he said. He said I had a fundamental darkness. It is important to try things, though. And I think when Irish people had money, you know, we gave things a go, didn't we? We just, and economists don't understand that because economists can only see the world in terms of numbers as opposed to an experience. Like, right now, we've no money, okay? We've no money. <laughs> but, on a bit, There'll be money. <laughs> and on again from that, there'll be no money. <laughs> and then, oh, then there'll be money. <laughs> and as long as we don't allow ourselves to become defined by the amount of cash that's in the country. Do you know what I mean? There's more to being Irish than money. I don't go in for this Barack Obama. Bullshit when he spoke to the nation. Ireland, your best days are ahead of you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and what do we do in the meantime? <laughs> That's like going out for a drink with somebody and him saying, Jesus, we'll have some session next month. <laughs> no, it's... it's the most... I'm, you know, maybe I'm wrong.
wrong, but I know things are tough right now. Things are hard. I've been followed around the country by four fucking empty houses demanding payment. You know, because I, you know, I fucking bought too many houses during the good times. Fuck, why wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I bought a two-bedroom house in Dublin. Cost me eight million quid. Why? Because it was going to cost 20 million the following day. <laughs> I was going to make 14 million quid overnight. <laughs> and the bank were here, take the money, take it. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, there's loads of it, take it. <laughs> but we, we, we went for it. You know, econ now, now economists are telling us that we fucked up the good times. And we're like, what? What did we do? What did we do? <laughs> How did we fuck up the good times? And they're saying, by spending all your money. <laughs> That's what we were supposed to do. That's why they were called the good times. <laughs> you can't. You can't be saving your money during the good times. Because then they're not the fucking good times. Then they're the in preparation for the bad times times. We went for it. We tried stuff. It didn't suit us, but we fucking went for it. Skiing. <laughs> Irish people skiing. We get panic attacks if we're in a house with more than one set of stairs. <laughs> get away from the balcony, Seamus! Get away! This place is a death trap. <laughs> Was there anything more frightening to the posh fuckers of Europe? <laughs> On top of the Alps in their designer gear, old Dolce Gabbana and Gucci and Prada. And then we came along, head to toe, Fucking Aldi. <laughs> Aldi skiing gear. We were in the nude by the time we got to the bottom of the hill. The stuff fucking disintegrated if you went faster than five miles an hour. But we went for it. We fucking tried it. Kids up there learn a different alphabet. You know, I mean, it's essentially the same, it just has a different fucking rhythm to it. You go into a Montessori and cab and you see the kids there sitting on the little plastic fucking chairs going, A, hey, fucking B, fucking C, fucking D, fucking E, fucking F, fucking G, fucking H, fucking I, fucking J, fucking K, fucking L, and fucking P, fucking Q, fucking R, fucking S, fucking T, fucking U, fucking V, fucking W, fucking X, fucking Y, fucking Z. Now I fucking know me fucking A, B, C. <laughs> You fucking sing along with me! <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> I think you can tell a lot about uh, whatever type of people that you're uh, with. You can tell, have a guess as to what they're like from the sound of their language. You wouldn't understand it, you know. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily understand like, the Irish languages, you know. Fwishaviyautza. <laughs> Shall bog garret a mask marine er ill on more egg shul cush clodder madness tranon o loon go saren here egg by fish of a yout shall bog garret a mask marine o cre crua o uignus dork. O kind hunter here egg bag. Now, I know a lot of you didn't understand that, <laughs> but you can just sense from the sound of it, we've been through a lot as a people. <laughs> I was in Finland, that part of Scandinavia in Europe, and the language up there, I had no idea what they were saying either, but it's just a different kind of hen. Hen, men, hen, 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 hen. I think they're the most depressed cunts that ever lived. 
Hörne, 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 hörne. The hörne, minne, hörne, 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 hörne. It's great, you can roll out of bed in any mood you want to be left alone for the day. Hörne, minne, hörne, 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 hörne. And then I discovered that countries from that part of the world in the 16 and 1700s invaded Africa. What the fuck must that have sounded like? Because neither tribe would have known what the other one was on about. Hen. Hen, man, son, hen, hen, hen. Do la 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 silver. 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 Do la 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 We are a country full of 